how to become a boss, how to become a person that doesn't give a fuck. First thing is don't worship money. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. You need money, but always remember the man makes the money. The money does not make the man. You know, one of the things I'm really, really proud of myself about, and believe me, this was difficult. This was really difficult, was learning how to turn down people and turn down money. Um, in 2019, early 2020, um, some of the people in my group were out of control, fighting all day. Just, just completely attacking each other all day. And, you know, it, it, when, when it's 50 people, 100 people, 200, yeah, that's controllable. But once you get up to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people, it becomes a lot more difficult. So I made a decision. And the decision was I'm going to start turning people down. Can you imagine Someone offers you three, four, five thousand, and you say, No, that's okay. Keep your money. Some of you guys don't even make that in a month. I turn that down. Now, some would say that's bad capitalism, and they would have a point. Why am I rejecting people? But they have to go back to 2019, 2020. Um, before I had screenings, I, at that point, I just required people to sign a non-disclosure, but I didn't actually screen people at that point. They just went on the website, they bought my classes, they signed a non-disclosure, and they got in. And if you go to my website now, there are no links for GG33. There's the links of GG33 Academy, which is 98 bucks a month, but that's not my main school. That school doesn't even require a non-disclosure. I basically turn down people left and right. And the reason I do it is because of the experience I had. If you put bad quality people in your collective, they will spread like a fucking cancer. Uh, in 2019, there was a whore named Bailey in my group. This bitch has been with about fucking 50 people. And this bipolar whore would fucking attack everybody. And by the way, that's not my only experience with these fucking whores. If women sleep around with a lot of men, they become bipolar and they will flip on you in a second. And I made the decision three years ago that, that that's coming to an end. So I do not let whores in my group no matter how much they pay me. Liberals. The, these people who are woke, I turn them down left and right all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a female billionaire uh, who did a reading with me. And then she's like, oh, my God, I want to join. Uh, what's it cost? I told her. And she's like, no problem. I'll send that shit to you right away. And I'm like, uh, not that easy. Um, you have to pass the interview. She's like, OK. I asked her the questions and she didn't do too well. Especially that question when I asked, did you vote for Trump or Biden? No, don't don't tell me you voted for Biden because that's going to disqualify you. Because if you tell me you voted for Biden, I, I'm going to come to one or two conclusions. Either you're a woke motherfucker and I don't want anything to do with you or you're a fucking moron. And I definitely don't want anything to do with you. So uh, this billionaire woman who was ready to pay me at the time, it was like 17 racks for gold. It's way higher now. It goes up every couple months because I can do that. Well, why, why shouldn't I do that when billionaires are making millions off my stuff? Why shouldn't I charge them 20? What the fuck do they care? There's 22 million millionaires in America. That, that's what the gold audience is. 70% of the 300 some members I have in just in gold GG33, I'm not even covering silver and um, bronze, are multimillionaires. Some are billionaires. Uh, the only people who don't have millions are the people who got grandfathered in uh, from the very beginning because I'm loyal to my people. But at this point, it's very difficult to get in gold. 
It's very difficult to get in gold, and it's going to get more and more and more difficult to get in there because that's the way I want it. That's exactly the way I want it. I, I, I do not want to let any cancers in because a cancer spreads and then they start infecting other people and they're in infecting other people's minds. I don't want that. I actually look out for my people. If you're woke, don't join. If you're a feminist, nope. If you're a fucking whore, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want those people. I don't want those people around my... I will turn down money. That is something Andrew Tate would never do. That is something no other influencer would ever do. Turn down money. As a matter of fact, I've turned down over $300,000 this year. Yeah, let me say that again. Over $300,000 I've turned down because I wouldn't take people in my group. Now, some would say that's bad capitalism. And, you know, you do have a point. Uh, some people would think that, you know, you would want everyone's money is green. And when it comes to some stuff, it is like GG33 Academy. I don't really discriminate in there. You know, whoever you are, you're, you're in there. But to get to the next level, um, there are certain requ requirements. I want people to know I'm a hardcore conservative. I'm way to the right of Rush Limbaugh. All these guys who used to over there running their mouth, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity, I'm way to the right of them. I'm way to the right of Andrew Tate. I'm way to the right of everybody. But you know what the thing about me is? I'm not religious at all. Zero. I'm not religious. Most people who are very far right are religious, brainwashed by whatever holy book they were. Not me. See, I'm, I'm like the... The, the person that no one gets, you know, people will come over, do a podcast with me. I'll smoke like two, three blunts and they're looking at me like, yo, it, how are you smoking that much? And you're still completely normal. I see nothing wrong with you. Very simple. I'm a fucking genius. And that shit's not going to affect my brain like it is other people. Other people, dumb people should not smoke. It's going to slow you down. People like me, well, they're not many, but people like me can pretty much do whatever. You know, just like fucking tigers can abuse their bodies. And they'll fucking do better than most. Everyone has something. And I want people to understand. Do not place money above everything. Do not. Because at some point, everyone's going to be judged. I remember I had uh, at least four kids in the past six weeks who wanted to join a gold and they were willing to pay the money. And I'm like, uh-uh, I need to see 100K. They're like, what? Yeah, I need to see that you either have 100K in uh, your trading accounts and, or your bank or something. Because I am not taking someone's, I'm not going to take 20K someone's money if all they have is 40K to their, you know, all they have is 40,000. Why would I take half your money? I want you to understand no one else probably in the world would do that. I will because I'm different. Because money is not my God. If money was my God, would I be talking shit about? If money was my God, I would have took ESPN's deal. Hell, if I wasn't uh, doing what I was doing, if I didn't have such a clear and present instinct to do it my way, I would have joined the Masons in 2003 when they recruited me. I turned their down in their tracks. Not interested. I'll make my own path. And everyone who's in gold... Uh, I got about 20 of you guys working for me right now. I would say after August, I'm going to start the next run and I'll have about 30, 40 more of you guys working for me. And then we're going to go to silver and then people in silver can start having jobs because it's one thing to fucking make yourself rich. That, you know, 22 million Americans have done that. Now, while that's a small percentage of Americans as a whole, about 6%. Um, a lot of people did that. 22 
million other people became millionaires. So that's not really that big of an accomplishment. I mean, I'm sure you, some of you are hearing that stuff and it broke and you're like, oh my God, oh my, if I had a million, nah, dude, trust me. It's not like it. It's not like that, man. You know, but when you can make other people rich as well, that's what I'm talking about. Not when you can make yourself king, but when you can fucking be a king maker and put other people on. And that's exactly what I've done. I've put a lot of people on. And very few people in society would have done what the fuck I did. Some of you guys are too selfish. Some of you guys are too greedy. Some of you guys don't have the foresight to do it. I'm different. Now, does that mean I'm better than you? No. No. Me, my body, I am not better than you. You know what is more important than you? My mission. My mission is more important than everyone else's mission. Because my mission is to enlighten people around the world. I made a bet with God. Me and him have a very, very complicated relationship. I'm not a fan. I don't worship. Don't do that. I respect them. But I, I shouldn't even say him. I, whenever I apologize, it. Uh, God does not have a gender. Okay. <laughs> that That is 100% real. But I'm here to enlighten as many people as possible. And one thing I will not put up with is disrespect. Now, Pythagoras founded is the father of numerology. He's the first guy who put it together or at least the one who gets the most credit for it. And that's fine and dandy. He was obviously did it way before me. But, you know, there's a difference between a horse and buggy and a car. You see, the, the, when you had horses transporting people, they had carriages and they had wheels. Just like a car, but see, a car is way superior to a horse and buggy in every way. But the horse and buggy came first. So yes, Pythagoras came first. But to be very blunt, even the people who follow me on Twitter, who haven't paid me a dime, have never got a reading, they know more about numerology now than Pythagoras ever did. And that's solely because of one person. Moi. Me. You know, uh, someone interviewed me the other day and they asked me, Gary, why are you doing this? Why are you putting all this numerology and astrology out there? And some people thought it was for influence. And yeah, I chase clout, no doubt. And some people thought it was for money. Yeah, I like money, but that shit ain't my God. You know what I told them? Ego. My ego. My ego is so large that I believe when I was 23 years old, I can shove numerology and astrology down everyone's throat in the world. And that's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what I've done. By 2025, this will be mainstream. I am doing that the groundwork right now. And no one else could have before me. No one else could have done after me. As a matter of fact, all you numerologists who are coming after me, uh, you're definitely, um, you're definitely <laughs> going to be, you're either going to pay homage or I'm going to take you out. And it's that simple. I got friends in politics. You have no idea what I'm going to do. First of all, numerology will be regulated by the end of the decade. And guess who the person who's going to be doing the recommendations are? Moi. You can't be a fucking doctor without a license. You can't be a fucking lawyer without a license. What the fuck makes you think you can be a fucking numerologist without learning the stuff properly? Because what's happening now is so many people are desperate for my info, GG33 info, that they're basically going to frauds who know probably less or as much as they do. They're just better at writing, making it seem like they knew what the hell they're doing. All this information I've seen on TikTok and IG about numerology, people calling me out, they don't even know the fucking basics. And if you listen to them, you're going to fail. 
You're going to fail. It is what it is. I'm sorry to hurt your feelings. You're going to fail. And for those people who say I'm gatekeeping, listen to me. You're 100% I'm gatekeeping. But guess what? I release more free information than everyone in my field combined in the past hundred years. I did that. And some people, instead of being thankful, these NPCs feel entitled to more and more and more. But, you know, there's an old saying, when the student's ready, the teacher will come. Don't work like that with me. You better fucking prove you're fucking worthy. And that takes a little bit more than just money. Yeah, five years ago, you could have got in GG33 with just money. Sign a non-disclosure. I won't question too much about you. Not anymore. I got billionaires in my group, star athletes. I, I, I don't need money. So at this point, I can be like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> I don't want you in my group. That's what I can do. Because God is not my fucking money. And money is not my God. You, you guys would be shocked at the way I live. I fucking drive a scooter. A fucking electric scooter. I maybe drive a car maybe once every two weeks now. If I'm not if I'm in, in Miami. Drive a fucking scooter. I don't care what people think. I just don't care. But one thing I will not tolerate is disrespect. Won't happen. And I'm going to make this abundantly clear to whoever is listening. Roger, seven, the number seven, Aaron, and some other guys. I'm taking you all the way with me, guys. You show me loyalty and to the other GG3 members. Uh, King Noel is doing a lot of good stuff for me. A lot of people are looking out. I got you guys. For the people who think they're getting over on me, I don't think you understand what's going to happen. I, I really don't think you do. My favorite episode of Game of Thrones was the Red Wedding. If you don't know what that means, look it up. I do not forgive. I never forget. Ever. I don't have hobbies. You know, people think uh, gambling is my hobby. Don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck about these sports teams. Don't give a I'm just trying to hit parlays. Some months it works, some months it doesn't. And then the day, I'm still doing pretty well. You know why? Because I can win a million bucks a month and then I can bleed 100K for the next couple months. I don't care. Just don't. The only person at this point who can stop me who's alive is Lord Rothschild. Man, he's not getting in my way. No need for him to. Everyone else, I want you to know this. If you screwed me, if I helped you, and you try to take advantage of my so-called grace and kind will, uh, I, might, I might let it go for a year, two, five, maybe a decade. But I will look you up. To the people who are conning people in my name, opening up fake IG accounts, fake Twitter accounts, I can't wait for the day. <laughs> where I can hand uh, someone in the CIA a hundred K and be like, let me get all their addresses. I can't wait for that day. As a matter of fact, that will give me more pleasure than fucking winning the lotto. I'm not like you people. You show me kindness. I'll show you guys kindness. You try to play me. I might smile for a little bit, but I will Howard at you. I really will. And I'm going to start uh, naming a few more capos. A lot of people been doing good job. Jake, appreciate you. David, appreciate you. Uh, Noel, appreciate you. A lot of people been doing a lot of good stuff. Um, ones who, you know, 
I, I still believe that there's more good people in the world than bad. But I also believe most of the world is NPCs and they don't count. NPCs are the enemies. And if you're a person with a soul, be careful who's around your circle. Be very, very careful because they can bring you down. As a matter of fact, most of the successful men I've seen in life were brought down by women. Straight up brought down by women. If you're a man, one of the most important things you can do, as a matter of fact, it might be the, the most important thing, is get the right woman by your side. You know, and unlike all these other clowns out here, I never had a girlfriend cheat on me. I've been married for almost 20 years. No issues. Because I found the right one. My, my woman is never going to mouth off the people on Twitter. Because that's not her place. Men. It's never a 50-50 partnership. As a matter of fact, it's 65% woman, 35% you when it comes to making the decisions. And as a matter of fact, that's how it is in my house. When it comes down to what bed sheets we're going to have, what we're going to buy, what we're going to eat, the groceries, what the kids are going to go, all that stuff, that's mostly women. But when it comes to the main decisions, yo, baby, we're moving to Miami. You know, I really, I, I, I literally told my wife, we're moving to Miami and I gave her like a week to pack. I came home from Vegas. I'm like, we're moving to Miami. And I, I took the cars and I drove them down while she was packing everything in the house. And then she took the plane down. Because why, why should my woman be in a car for two, three days driving from Cleveland to Ohio and stop at hotels? She don't need that stress. She'll take the she'll take a flight and I will drive my happy ass down and I'll pick her up at the airport because that's what the fuck a man does. You're supposed to make your wife's job easier. But I make the decisions. The big ones, the 35 percent of big decisions that is to be done by men. That is to be done by men, men. And you need a woman to understand that. And before I end this space, I'm going to tell you a little story. I've said this on spaces before, but this is a really important story. So I always like to keep telling people. I uh, talked to this one guy who was born in Japan. And he married an Indonesian woman who was in Japan. And then this Indonesian woman got very homesick. And she said she wanted to go to Indonesia. This guy left his job, transferred everything to Indonesia, everything he did. He sold his house. He sold everything in Japan, moved to Indonesia, got a job, get settled in. All of a sudden, within nine months, the woman says, I don't want to live here anymore. And she goes back to Japan. She leaves him and goes back to Japan. And he says, well, if I leave, I won't be able to, you know, pay for her and for the kids. So he has to be, stay in Indonesia while the woman who convinced him to go there <laughs> went back to Japan. And then he's on the phone telling me how bad she is, how, how she did this to him. And I just listen to him and listen to him. And I'm like. Uh, do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to lie to you? He's like, of course I want the truth. I'm like, bro, that's all your fault. He's like, what are you talking about? I just told you about this, this, and this. I'm like, wait a second. Didn't the woman tell you to move to Indonesia when you were in Japan and she convinced you to move? And he's like, yeah. 
I'm like, so you follow the woman's lead? And he's like, yeah. And that's why the fuck you fail. Very few women in this world have leadership ability. Obviously, numerology and astrology will point out the ones that do. I'm not saying no women have leadership ability, but most of them don't. And if you follow a woman's lead as a man and you fail, you best look in the mirror, bro. Because it's you who failed. Not them. The woman was being a woman. It's a woman's priority. The priority is to change her mind. That's how they are. It's up to the man to be logic. You know, when people, uh, when women tell me, oh, we have more emotional intelligence than guys. Emotional intelligence. <laughs> emotional intelligence. What the fuck does that even mean? Because intelligence comes down to logic and emotions are not logical. Sorry to sound like a fucking Vulcan here, but that's what it is. Women, these, these women who go to college, oh, we have more emotional intelligence. Oh, you mean you're more emotional. Another thing, guys. We live in a different world today than we did when our grandpa and everyone ran things. But some things never change. If your woman goes to work every day and she's stressed out by the problems of work and then she comes home and then you start saying, yo, baby, let's have some sex or baby, give me a, a fucking meal or a, why the fuck is in this house cleaned? What the fuck? Your woman is working and you're telling her to fucking clean the house and fucking cook and open her legs. She's fucking tired. She fucking worked all day. She was being masculinized in the workplace. Now I understand society's not like it used to. But if you have a woman. And she's working. You're wor working. You're, you're always going to struggle to a point. Because she's going to have masculine energy in her too. She's working. She's dealing with the same type of bullshit you're dealing with. The proper move as a guy is to try to make as much money as possible and don't find no fucking hoe. Don't find no fucking gold digger. Use numerology and astrology correctly. <laughs> Again, correctly. And you should be able to find someone who's going to be loyal and who will stay at the house and raise your kids. You know, I, one of the things I love so much about my wife, she's fucking gorgeous, right? And, you know, she, you, I remember going out with her when she was like 24. Bro, everywhere I went, it was like a fist fight. The guys would hit in, on her right in front of me. <laughs> That, 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 yeah. I definitely learned how to fight back then, man. A lot of it. But one of the things I really respect about her was she's not like all these other fucking fake women. Oh, I, I, I don't want to breastfeed my kid. It, it, it might uh, ruin my rack. Oh, oh no, I, I'm too worried about my looks to breastfeed my kid. Oh, no, I can't do that. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut the fuck up. When you have kids, don't worry about your fucking body anymore or how the fuck you look. Your obligation is that child. And when you breastfeed, their IQ point goes up 10 to 9 points. And that goes for you men too. Make sure your woman doesn't have to work so she can breastfeed the kids. But going back to these women, some of these women, oh my God. All they do is they care about their looks. They're so fucking vain. That's all they care about. Look in the fucking mirror all day. They don't want to have kids because God forbid they get a little extra fat on their belly. You women make me fucking sick. Yeah, I get it. You want to look good? I get it. 
But once you have that kid, you better start breastfeeding. And if you don't, because, oh, no, I'm worried what it's going to do to my breasts. Fuck you. Fuck you. Piece of fucking trash. Pieces of fucking trash. That's exactly what's going on. When you have a kid, it's about the kid. That's how people have to feel. That's how people have to feel. Both people have to do their part. And one more thing. Uh, for all the Christians and the Muslims and all this other, all these other women who say I'm a bad influence on people. What what am I a bad influence of? Telling men to stick with one woman, find the right woman, get married, stay married, not cheat. Is that why I'm a bad person? Because I don't support and support you, old fucks who want to fucking bless kids. They say it in their fucking parades. We're coming for your children. They say it in their fucking parades. But I'm the bad guy, right? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Interesting world we live in, man. The oppressed will always protect their oppressor because they're too dumb to know any freaking difference. And guys, and the reason I say guys is because 85% of GG33 is men. Watch out for these broads coming to your DMs because what, what most likely happened is first they try with me and then they try with the capos and then they move down the list. Watch out for them. If you put a GG33 in your bio and all of a sudden women start hitting you up out the blue, you know what it is. Ladies, in GG33, you're not like the rest of them. These bitches are dumb. You actually know how the world works. But I also hope I taught you about morality. You know, it's I, I teach numerology, astrology, capitalism is the underlying factor. But I also teach morality. And if, if some of you guys need a Bible or a, a Quran to do it, then by all means, go there. I don't need a Quran telling me not to steal. I need a Bible telling me not to cheat on my wife. I don't need that stuff. You might. I don't. I dare you to find one fucking person who fucking, uh, who's hanging around me in 20 years who saw me around another woman. Well, I'm not saying like not fucking hugging another woman, saying hi, what's up, but actually hanging out, fucking doing sh shit that's inappropriate with other women. People call me a cult leader. Where are the fucking five, six, ten women I've impregnated in GG33 then? I don't know where the fuck they are. At the end of the day, I don't care how cocky this sounds. You're all lucky to have learned from me because no one else is going to teach you anything. And anyone who's teaching numerology and astrology at any sort of decent level, learn it from me directly or indirectly. That's simple. Having said that, it's the 28th. Go out there and get your bag. This has been a GG33 production. <laughs>